Here, we're in Smile Studio, which features the Jupyter Lab Suite, where customers can create notebooks using any combination of R, Python, Scala, and notably SPL2. And then they can experiment with this data inside of the Splunk ecosystem. We also support the most popular frameworks, including TensorFlow and PyTorch. I can easily share my notebooks, datasets, and models with my colleagues as well. You may have noticed a directory here called Content Packs. This is a new capability we are building to integrate pre-built content from a variety of fields, including security, service insights, and more. We also include a series of sample notebooks to help you get started. Here's one that walks us through building a TensorFlow model in Python. All of the logic to pull training data, experiment, and even publish the model is built right in to help you jumpstart your projects in Smile. With Smile, not only can you train your own models, but also you can leverage our built-in streaming ML models right inside your notebook. Let's go take a look. Here, I'm experimenting with one of our streaming ML models. It's adaptive thresholding. And I'm experimenting on it on a data set that I have here in S3. One really neat thing to note is that since this is an SPL code block, I can insert any logic in here that I would otherwise put into a Splunk search query. This enables all sorts of use cases from inside the notebook, which is a very powerful capability. Great, I have my results that have appeared below. We're seeing the mean and variance returned, but you know what? The sample data set just isn't quite at the scale I want to test on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line of code right here, this entire code block, and it's going to pre-paste the results at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this sample data set from S3 with an actual data gen, uh, generated function to generate my training data set. We can do this using our built-in function that we provide, and that's called data gen. All right, let's paste this function in. I forgot a pipe here, so let me go back and add that pipe into the sample code block. And then let's run it. With just a few parameters, I can generate a data set with enormous scale to exactly match what I need to test. For more info on scale capabilities with Smile, take a look at my colleague Chinmay's session, SPL2 Magic, bringing massive scale and advances to analytics content in Splunk. And you can see here, in just a few seconds, we're going to run the exact same streaming ML function on a massively scaled, automatically and dynamically generated data set. We'll give it a few seconds for the search results to propagate, and there we go. This gives me the confidence I need that our model can run on large data. And now I'm ready and confident to push this model to production. I can use this model with my Splunk search queries to search on the corpus of data I already have, or I can add this straight to my data ingest pipeline in DSP. If you are interested in checking out more ML-powered workflows and notebooks built on Smile, make sure to watch the session with my colleague Lila and the Applied Research team. They will be demonstrating ML models that automatically extract fields from computer logs. This eliminates the challenges traditionally associated with rules-based field labeling. So whether you're training your own ML models, performing advanced data analysis, or building data pipelines with our built-in streaming ML capabilities, Smile Studio can help you succeed with your data science, analysis, and ML practices. But there's one more thing I want to show you here. We can go right over to the Settings tab, and boom, dark mode. You can toggle between light mode and dark mode throughout Smile. But what about our core Splunk customers? What about our Splunk admins, our data analysts, our app users, our SPL experts, and our NOC and SOC teams? You may have noticed this top navigation bar up here. Stepping out of Smile Studio, I'm going to click the Home button over here. Smile Studio is just one part of the Smile experience. Once we've built our models, deploying, managing them, and monitoring them has historically been a nightmare. In Smile, we have simplified many of these MLOps tasks with powerful dashboards, 
monitoring, and an easy-to-use UI to deploy and run the content that is created. Let's walk through what it looks like. This is the home screen you'll see when you log in. You have quick links to your recently opened notebooks, recent models trained, as well as some useful dashboard metrics on your running models. And just like in Smile Studio, I can switch seamlessly between light and dark mode. I can also go over and click into our model management page to see the list of models that I've published. These are ready for production. I can open them to see some details, or I can click delete, I can manage them, or I can click run to go deploy one. Let's run this model. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the input and output fields. In this case, I'm taking my model and running it against a sample data set inside my S3 bucket. For demo's sake, I'm going to use the exact same location to dump my results. And now I'm going to go ahead and click Run. And that's it. My model has started. From here, we can go straight to monitor the job running in real time. Smile contains powerful runtime metrics for our MLOps customers, both at the individual run level as well as at the aggregate level. Let's take a look here. My job has been running for just 13 seconds, and already I've processed 522 megabytes of data and made over 1.4 million predictions. You can see these dashboards update in real time as your models run. And of course, you can see these model run metrics for each of your model runs, but you also have a view of your aggregate metrics across your Smile environment. I can see important information related to my environment, plan for capacity, and more.